I'm going to use GitHub Copilot to build a native Android app, a game, without knowing anything about how to build Android apps. So let's get started. So first up, let's take a look at what we're going to be building, and that's the connections game from the New York Times. So in this case, we have four words across in a grid and four down. And basically, the goal is to get these into the correct groups. So in this case, it might be CC, ME, KD, and ED. These are all names that have sound like two letters. And we click Submit to check our answer, and we got that one right. So let's create our application. Now, to build this application, I'm going to be using Flutter. Flutter is a framework for building uh, cross-platform applications that are native. So this could run on Android or iOS or, or Windows. Um, and it's a really nice extension once you get it set up. It prompts you to install Flutter. It's very easy to use. So let's do a new project here. And I'm just going to say application. And then we'll put it in our Flutter folder. And let's just call this connections game. All right, so the application's created. Let's now select a device here to run it on. I'm going to do the medium phone API. And here's our phone. And we'll just put that right here. Let's go ahead and run our project. All right, so I sped that up so you didn't have to watch the build process, but this is kind of just the base uh, Flutter application that you get, which is a counter. So let's start building our application. Now, what I want to do here is create the UI of the application. So I'm going to open up GitHub Copilot. And I'm going to go into chat. And instead of trying to describe what I want it to look like, I'm going to show it what I want it to look like. I'm going to do that using the vision preview for GitHub Copilot extension. There's over 30 extensions for GitHub Copilot. This is one of them. And this is from Microsoft. It will eventually be rolled into GitHub Copilot, but you can use this today amongst a lot of other extensions, uh, including ones to uh, do things like talk to your database. So here's how this works. Let's go back to our game here and let's get a screenshot of this thing. All right, let's just grab a screenshot here. And then let's use the vision participant here and let's just say, create the UI, use Flutter. And then I'm gonna paste in the image here. Let's go ahead and let it go. All right, so here's the response that we got. You can see it's quite long. So let's go ahead and open up our main.dart file here, which is where this is going to go. And then let's go ahead and um, put this right here is called apply in editor. And what this does is it just applies this code to whatever file that we have open. So it looks like we're probably going to just delete all of this and then replace it. But instead of us trying to figure that out, we're going to use the apply in editor, which does that for us. So we'll accept changes here. Looks like it changed pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and save. Now to see if this works, we go to the terminal and we can do what's called a, a hot restart. And that's shift R in the terminal. And that should do a hot restart. And let's see what our UI looks like. All right, so there we go. We have the UI, right? Here's our different tiles. Now we only have three rows because this one we already solved, but Let's see if we click them. So the game doesn't actually work, right? These buttons don't do anything, but all of our UI elements are here and remarkably well done thanks to the Vision plugin for GitHub Copilot. Okay. I'm going to switch over to edits now. This is GitHub Copilot edits. You can toggle. This is a kind of like chat, but it also can create files and update our files on the fly instead of us actually having to apply changes. So let's start building out this application. I'm also using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is new for GitHub Copilot here. And let's go. I should be able to select up to four items at a time. If I select an item that is already selected, that item should be deselected. All right, so we can see changes are streaming in here in our main.dart file. They're being made on the fly by edits. And it looks like that's all that it did. So we can go ahead and say accept here and then save this. And then let's do a hot restart and see if this actually works. So we should be able to select now by clicking. We can. We cannot select more than four, only four. And then when we tap them, they are deselected. Nice. OK. All right. So the next thing I want to do here is I actually want to split this UI out into the proper components. Right now, the whole game is in the main file and we can continue on like that. But a proper application would have things componentized. So let's do that. Break the UI out into its various components so that each component has its own logic encapsulated. 
All right, so it's going to create components for an app header, which would be, I assume this up here, game instructions, category hint, game grid, mistakes counter, and actions button. So it's actually creating some components for these items up here in the corner, which we haven't implemented yet, but it sort of knows that we need to, so it's gonna create components there. But again, these are just the UI components, it's not the actual logic. And this may take a second, so I'll speed this up. All right, so it did break things out into components, but it didn't put them into different files. So here's a component, but it's still in the main file. So let's be a little more specific. Put the different components into their own files. All right, so I sped that up, but you can see now the main file is quite a bit smaller here. And uh, we have one, two, three, four, five new files that have been created, action button, app header, category hint, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and save these, and then let's save all files here. And then we can do a hot restart and just make sure that our UI still renders and we don't have any errors. All right, and does selection still work? It does. Okay, so now our application is componentized. We're looking good. So the next thing we want to do here is actually want to pull these words from a JSON file because right now I assume in the main file here maybe that there's just a static list of words somewhere that it's using. Maybe it's in the game card. Let's see, no, game grid. Yes. All right. So here are the words, but notice it doesn't know anything about the groups of the colors. So we're going to do that by putting all that in a JSON file. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to solve this puzzle. So let's solve it. All right. So this is what our solved puzzle looks like. So let's get another screenshot just like we did before. Just go ahead and grab this. And then let's use our vision participant and convert this to JSON. So I'm going to go to vision here and I'm just going to say, Convert the groups, words, and colors to a JSON file so that I can have multiple games and I can pull one game at a time from that file. And then I'm going to paste in the image and then I'm going to, it's actually going to take the file that I have open. So I'm just going to mark that as being invisible and then let this go. All right. So you can see here that we have the games. So title names that sound like two letters. Sopranos, familial nicknames, and Sesame Street characters, along with the colors, and then our games and the game ID, right? So this is really, really cool because it pulled in exactly the words from the completed game here. So this is nice. Let's go ahead and add this to a new file and we'll save it. And then we'll put it in games.json in our lib folder. Go ahead and save that. And now let's go back to our edits here and let's tell it to use the games.json instead of the static list of words. Instead of a static list of words, please pull the game from the games.json file. All right, so I sped that up again. You can see we've got some new components here along with some additional instructions, but also notice that it says you've reached the maximum number of files that can be added to the working set. And so what's happening is Copilot is trying to intelligently drop any files that we're not working with. So they're no longer in the working set here so that it can make room for the new files that it created. And it actually created some files, category hint, like game service, which I don't even see here, which means we will probably need to run this again. So let's go ahead and pull some of the things out of the working set here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard this last set of changes. So yes. And then let's remove like game instructions. We don't need that category hint. We don't need that. Uh, the header is probably not important here. We're just making room for these additional files that need to be created. And then let's try that again. All right. So this time it looks like we got everything and it made a bunch of changes here. It added in a game service, a game grid, the game itself, which is a class, which uh, is the same shape as the JSON data, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and accept all of this here. And then let's go ahead and save everything. And then I noticed down at the bottom, there's some additional instructions. Uh, the changes created a game. Uh, now the game loads from the JSON file and properly shuffles the words, but it's also don't forget to update your pubspec.yaml to include the JSON file, which I assume that it did. Let's go down here and see. Yes, to add assets to your application, add an asset section, and it did. It added uh, the, the games.json. So my guess is that we're going to need to restart the application to pick up that change to the uh, pub spec file, which is like a configuration file. And then let's see what we get here. All right, so this is pretty cool. Look at this. We're now pulling in from the JSON file, and we have all of the words here. Um, 
That's really cool. And that's coming from the JSON file. Okay. So now let's start to handle the different game scenarios. One of them is when we select four items, if they are correct and then they're in the right group, they need to be moved out of the grid and into a box up here at the top like this. This one was created by uh, when we did the initial scaffold of the UI because that was in the screenshot. So let's go ahead and add this logic. But first we have this working set, we're maxed out again. So let's remove some of the things we might not need. So um, I probably think that'll do it. So let's go ahead and make some room there and then let's, let's do this. When I click the submit button, check to see if the four items that I have selected are in the same group. If they are, move those items out of the grid and into a single item at the top of the grid that has the correct background color for the group. Okay, so we've got some new files here. Let's go ahead and accept this. We'll save all of our files and then let's do a hot restart. And then let's see if this works. So one of them is, um, let's see here, this one right here, so we have uh, CC, Edie, Emmy, and Katie. Click Submit. And look at that. It actually uh, removed the one that was there and made space for this one. So we need to remove the boilerplate one, but that's right. Let's try um, Meadow, Junior, Tony, and Carmelo, which is Sopranos. Look at that with the correct background color. And then, so this really works. This works, which is really cool. So let's try this. If we have four that are incorrect, when we hit submit right now, nothing happens. They're just deselected. So let's handle this. What we want them to do is kind of shake to indicate that the guess was incorrect. We want them to remain selected and we want to decrement the mistakes remaining. So let's try this. When I click the submit button, if the four items I have selected are not in the same group, please gently shake the items horizontally to indicate an incorrect answer. Please leave the items selected and decrement the amount of mistakes remaining. All right, I sped that up again, but let's see what it did. Added mis add mistake tracking with visual feedback, add the shake animation, add incorrect state tracking, update the mistakes counter, add animation, clean up, maintain selection after incorrect submission, added proper error handling flow. All right, let's accept, let's save, and let's restart. All right, so we have our first error. Now, usually when this happens, what I will do is I will uh, terminate that. And then let's go ahead and just start again to make sure that the error isn't something that requires a restart. Sometimes that's the case. All right, so we do have errors here. So let's go ahead and see what went wrong. Let's copy this uh, here, the stack trace, and let's just paste this right back into edits and let GitHub Copilot handle this. So it looks like it forgot an import, easy enough. Let's go ahead and take that. And then let's try to run this again. All right, so this time the application loaded. Let's try here, uh, let's see, tone. let's try four that are incorrect. So we can just pick any four, click Submit. All right, so the shake is a little wonky. Look at that, very nice. The first item still wants to shake, but I like it. All right, so let's implement the shuffle now. Oh, look, shuffle is already implemented. We didn't have to do anything there. What about deselect all? Also already implemented, very nice. So at this point, we have a completely functional game that we've built without knowing anything about uh, Flutter or, or how to build a native Android app. I think the last thing we wanna do, because we do have this item here, is we wanna just um, remove the example solution item at the top. All right, should be a pretty simple change here. Let's save and then let's refresh. Perfect, that's gone. All right, at this point, we've pretty much built out our game. The only thing that we might wanna do here is, let's see, let's just make sure this still works. So like, I, I really would like this to be 100% of the width. This should be bold and these should just be normal text. So I mean, I'm a stickler for, for pixel perfect stuff, so let's just, fix that real quick. I believe that's in the uh, solved group widget. So let's just go here and ask for that. Please make sure that the solved group is 100% the width of the view. 
the title of the group in the box should be bolded, but the words beneath should just be in normal text. All right, and then let's save this. And then I'm just gonna do a hot reload here. And look at that, right? So it's 100% the width. Actually, it should have been only as wide as the grid, but this is just looking a whole lot better. Uh, let's see here, let's, let's see here. Let's uh, Meadow, Carmela, Junior, and Tony, and then see what that looks like. I mean, it's just starting to look really, really good. All right, so at this point, we have a fully functional game that we've created here. Now, a few tips. Uh, when you go to do this, if you notice when I'm talking to GitHub Copilot, I'm not asking it to do a bunch of things at the same time. I'm asking it to do one sort of specific thing and moving from thing to thing to thing. And that's kind of what you will want to do. If you try to do too much in one prompt, uh, the answers aren't going to be as good and you're probably going to run into more errors that Copilot's then going to have to solve. That was my experience at least. But you can now build just about anything, even if you're not really sure what you're doing at all. Like in this case, I know very little about Flutter or Android, and I've got an app that I could deploy to the store. I could even use AI to generate some additional games. So it's phenomenal. What will you build?